Hi there. So about a year ago, I made my own anime light up glasses and I posted a video about it. It has by far been the most viewed thing on this channel. And I still get questions to this day of either a build guide or ideas for improvement, or some people just want me to give the thing away for free. A lazy bastard. So let's chill. If you either want a more in-depth build guide about how to make these things, or you're too lazy to build them yourself, and want to win a pair of your own, this is your video. Now, before you launch off from that jet fuel lubricated stick up your ass, I want to get a couple things out of the way. Yes, I know you can buy something similar to these online. I built my own for a few reasons. Number one, I already wear glasses. I just wanted something that I could clip tape on top of and I could still use my glasses as normal. Number two, even if I wore contacts, the types that you can get online have a diffusing film in front of the lens to help distribute the light better. Now, ideally, it probably looks better in video and uh, in certain pictures. And I've seen some people at convention just cut out pieces of paper and, you know, glue it over their glasses. But I didn't want to ruin my glasses and I still want to be able to see most of the time. <laughs> Number three, I ordered a pair of these and they're only available from China, basically. And I ordered them two months ago, and I'm still waiting to receive them. I can't wait that long. I can just prime a couple of things and I can build these in a day. And finally, if this advertising material is correct, Kim Jong-un's ghost might haunt you forever if you get them. So if you want to avoid getting haunted by a man with one less hole than most, here's how to build the glasses yourself. I've included links to both Amazon and DigiKey for both the tools and materials you'll need to build these things. I included DigiKey because it is far cheaper and you can order specifically what you want and I have a list in the descriptions for everything. But I did include Amazon because Amazon is less intimidating to some. And also, so I can get a little bit of a kickback, the Amazon links I've included are affiliate links. So I will get a kickback if you buy from them. Personally, I don't give a shit whether or not you do that or not. I'm making plenty of money on my own with my own job. This is just a hobby and any money that I'll get from this, I'll just put into projects and film equipment or to just simp on an e-thought for thousands of dollars and get ignored. This video will be two parts. First is an overview of the materials and tools used to build these glasses, and then an actual build guide. I'm making the assumption you've never soldered before, so this may seem a bit elementary to some. However, if this is your first video on a soldering project, I think this is a pretty good place to start. For this build, you will need the following. A soldering iron. I've included two links to this. The first one's expensive, as it's the one that I own. I love it. I solder a lot. Hako, Heiko, Jalapeno. Antonio Banderas, however you say their name, they make great, reliable irons, but it is overkill for this project. If you don't know, if you wanna go down the path of making circuits, get the second one to make sure this is something you actually wanna keep doing. Just don't expect it to last forever. You get what you pay for when you buy a $20 soldering iron. I think I could fill a small cemetery with all of the Radio Shack small soldering irons I've gone through. Number two, solder. And make sure it has a resin core. Resin helps solder flow better and we want to make solid connections. Resin's a godsend, especially if down the line you start soldering surface mount parts. Solder smells kind of gross, at least from what I can remember. For some reason I don't have my sense of smell anymore, so make sure you only do it in an area with good airflow. Especially because solder can cause cancer in the state of California. Which leads us to wire strippers. Mine are the fancy ones that strip by wire gauge, but the standard electrician ones will do the trick. Just don't accidentally order the stripper wires. She will not give you your deposit bag. Side cutters. Just don't let your actual cutters know about them. They'll get jealous. Gaffers or electrical tape. This is not required and you will not hurt yourself if you touch the positive and negative sides of a nine volt battery at once. If it did, I would be shocked. And so would you. <laughs> but it will help prevent the exposed wires from touching at certain points which will make your LEDs stop working from the resulting short. I actually recommend gaff tape over electrical tape, and that's because we're taping our own glasses. Electrical tape leaves a lot of goopy, gross black residue. I don't want that on my actual glasses. Whichever one you get, the tape will do two things. One, it will stop the leads from touching each other, causing a short and making your glasses no longer work. And two, it will stop the LED leads from scratching your glasses. I didn't do this the first time that I made these glasses and I scratched the blue light filter on my glasses. It looks annoying now whenever I look out of them. 
Get some tape that matches the color of your glasses that you're using, because it will be somewhat visible and it looks better when it blends in. Six, three millimeter white LEDs. Number seven, a nine volt battery. Number eight, a nine volt battery clip, since we don't just want to solder the battery to the wire. Speaking of, nine, some wire. You don't have to buy this. You can just strip some wire out of two or four or six unused USB cords if you want to save a buck. I have a ton of micro USB cords that I have no use for anymore. They would be great for a project like this. Personally, I recommend 24 gauge wire since it's the smallest wire my strippers can strip. Number 10, a momentary switch so that we can turn these glasses on and off somehow. And number 11, glasses. This is only if you don't wear glasses. If you do, then you can skip this purchase too. Way to go, Four Eyes. Let's talk for a sec about what soldering is. It's using a metal with a low melting point to glue together two metals with higher melting points in order to allow electricity to flow between them. It's different than welding, which is melting and mixing metals together instead. We choose to solder rather than weld our circuits together since electrical components are delicate and we'd let the smoke out of them if we cook them at 15,000 degrees. I'm soldering at a slightly lower 400 degrees. To begin, this is the layout of how the glasses will function. We will be connecting three LEDs in series in two parallel sets. What does that mean? Well, series is when electricity flows through one electrical component, like this LED, and then through another component, like this LED. So three LEDs in series means electricity starts to flow through the first LED, then into the second, then into the third, with no interruptions. Parallel means electricity flows between two or more components simultaneously. If you think about electricity like it was flowing water, a parallel circuit is like a river with a fork in it. And water, starting out in one place, splits into two. Parallel. I already covered that there is a voltage drop of three volts across one LED. So three LEDs balances out to needing nine volts total to function. So let's start by making our triple LEDs in series. Start by plugging in and turning on your soldering iron. If your iron is the cheaper one, plugging it in is turning it on. Don't touch any of the metal from now on until it's cool. You will burn yourself instantly, and that's not fun. To check if it's hot enough to start soldering, touch a bit of solder to the tip. It should melt almost instantly. Remember, do not breathe the smoke. Well-ventilated area. Call your mother. Also, make sure to not solder on the dining room table. You will occasionally leave burn marks from either dripping solder or touching the iron to the table. Don't say I didn't warn you. Shitty table. There's two metal leads sticking out of the bottom of each LED, and they're called the positive and negative terminals. The longer one is the positive terminal, and the other one doesn't get dates on Tinder. Take the positive terminal of one LED and twist around the negative terminal of another. Don't go too crazy with this since too much tightness will rip the terminal out of the bulb. That's the plastic part here. Get the spiral close to the bulb, but leave about this much space. It helps to have some pliers to twist them together. Next, take your soldering iron, not by the hot part, and touch it to the twisted together leads around the middle of the spiral. Give it a second and then touch the solder to the leads as well. When soldering, make sure you never form a connection by touching the solder to the soldering iron. This will form a cold joint, which is brittle and will most likely not conduct electricity. A cold joint is a common issue to why a circuit isn't working. You will learn this the hard way. Repeat this process for the third LED. Twist together positive and negative leads, solder them together, and let it cool. No touchy the hot parts. And look at that, we have one set of LEDs done. Touch the untwisted positive and negative leads to your nine volt battery to make sure you soldered everything correctly. Positive to positive, negative to negative. If it doesn't turn on, it could be a few different reasons. Check your solder joints. You can try to reflow them by touching your iron to the leads, waiting until the solder turns into a liquid again, then let it cool. If it still doesn't work, you may have the orientation of your LEDs off. The little trapezoidal flag things in your LED bulb should be facing the same way. If they're not, you twisted the leads wrong. That's all right, we have plenty of LEDs in the pack and it's not uncommon to have some duds as well. If it still doesn't work, it's possible you left the heat on too long on the leads and you melted the plastic of the LED, killing the poor thing. It had such little time on this earth. Shame on you. Toss this triple set of LEDs and start again. 
you'll be okay. These things are pennies. Repeat this three more times to build out the other LED circuits and make sure they all work by testing against the nine volt battery. We don't want any duds here. Lay out the LEDs on your glasses so we can figure out how long we need the connecting wires to be. What we need to do is connect all of the positive terminals together using wire and all of the negative terminals together using wire. Not the same wire. These need to remain separate. It should look something like this. Stop. Enhance. Enhance. I want you to pay attention here because this is how the LEDs should be laid out on your glasses. Notice that the outer terminals of the LED sets look like this. It goes positive to negative, negative to positive, positive to negative, negative to positive. This means you're reversing every other set of triple LEDs, then folding the inner twisted together leads forward over your glasses. When the LEDs have been laid out properly, you can then connect the inner negative terminals together and the positive terminals over the bridge of your glasses. When you do this, you only need one wire to connect the middle negative terminals and two wires to connect the outer and inner positive terminals in order to complete the circuit. This looks weird because this does not look like this, but this is how this looks in real life. Circuits are terribly confusing. You'll get used to it. Once you've connected both negative sets of terminals together and all three positive terminals together, you will only need two wires to run down the side of your glasses to eventually connect to the nine volt battery. Got it? Good. Next, we need to extend these wires down one of the arms of the glasses, down your back and into your pocket. For me, this was about four feet and I actually was a little bit short. And I'd recommend using more wire than you think you need to get the button into your pocket. Next, connect the positive nine volt battery clip wire, that's the red one, to the positive wire extending from your LED lights. We're gonna connect the negative terminal in almost the same way, but there's gonna be a button in between. So the black wire from the nine volt battery clip will connect to one side of the button, and the negative terminal of your glasses will connect to the other side of the button. The two last steps are snip the soldered leads so they don't block your vision, and just so that the whole thing looks a little bit cleaner. And finally, wrap the tips of the snipped leads in gaff tape. Don't connect them, that will ruin the circuit. Make sure there's a little bit of space between them, but cover the tips in gaff tape so they don't scratch your glasses. And once all that is set, you are done. All set. You can take a little bit of gaff tape and attach the LEDs to your glasses just so they stay placed a little bit better and so you can hide the LEDs from the front, but that's it, you're done. And now you have a button activated. I'm just pinching the button in my belt loop right now to keep them on, but that's it. All done, you're set. And now you can recreate some of your favorite scenes. Damn it, Shinji, stop acting like a little bitch. Wash your hands and get in the fucking robot! All right, cool. You made it to the very end, and hopefully you have a pair of your very own anime glasses just like this. If you want to be entered in the giveaway, you have to be subscribed to the channel, you have to like this video, and write a comment mentioning the giveaway in some way and let me know what cosplay specifically you'd want to do this for. I'd be interested. I'd be interested to see what sort of things you guys have in mind. I just want to say thanks, you know. I, I got my own little taste of internet connectivity and it's been really fun watching the comments keep pouring in like a year after I made the video and the critiques and suggestions have been super helpful and I think making V2 even better. So yeah, good luck on the giveaway if, if you're entering to win. And I really recommend too, if this is something that interests you, try it out for yourself. I know it's circuits can get a little bit pricey at the start in getting the materials cost, but I think it's 
super worth it and super fun to make something like this. It's so it's just like a such a sense of accomplishment and reward and not in the crappy EA loot box kind of way. It's like you actually have something tangible at the end of the day and we're, we're the way society's at right now, it's very consumptive and making is so much better for you. So I recommend if you're interested, make a pair. I think that's it. Hope you have a nice one. And share this with a friend, I guess, who's also interested in anime and circuits. There's a few of us out there. It's good to get ideas. Good to get things to work on. Peace.